Okay guys, so we are going to start off with the concept of throughput accounting. Now what exactly is this throughput accounting before I proceed with the throughput accounting? Uh, let me just give you a bit of an idea that uh, what is the importance of this throughput accounting at the PM performance management level and uh, at the same time how you can actually uh, uh, what to what topics you can relate this throughput accounting to you see <clears throat> uh, when we uh, when we study performance management there are different type of techniques that we study and amongst the different type of techniques there are few things there are few theories that we study and they are that includes the theory of constraints plus in addition to this theory of constraints we also do study the concept of JIT which is also the just-in-time approach so usually study these two important things which is the theory of constraints plus there is this JIT approach the throughput accounting has got a connection with the just-in-time approach plus it has got a connection with the theory of constraints now what does this theory of constraints says what does this GIT says so I'll just discuss GIT and theory of constraints first then I'm going to move on to this uh, throughput accounting <clears throat> so now talk about the theory of constraints so we know that organization can have different type of constraints uh, which could hamper its performance, which could hamper its uh, production, which could hamper its growth. The different type of constraints could be the availability of material, the availability of labor, the machine capacity. I mean, the different type of constraints could be the availability of material, the availability of labor, uh, the uh, machine capacity at times what happens is that the demand for the product could also act as a constraint so there could be different type of constraints that means different type of limitations that can operate on an entity and generally the organizations that we usually deal with they are the profit oriented organizations so the profit oriented organizations what they try to do is that they try to maximize the profit I repeat what they do is that they try to maximize the profit so whenever we talk about a profit oriented organization what it does is that it tries to maximize its profit so basically one thing that you got to keep in mind is that that when we talk about the constraints so you as an organization can have different limitations can have different problems and ultimately what you need to do is that you need to make sure that you strategize you plan out in a manner that you are able to maximize your organization's profits that is the first thing that you should try to do as an entity the next thing is actually the just-in-time approach now what do we mean by just-in-time approach the concept of just-in-time approach is basically uh, you produce what you can sell it's basically producing according to demand it's actually operating at zero levels of inventory although the just-in-time has got multiple component there's this just-in-time production there's this just-in-time purchasing but generally the concept of GIT the just-in-time approach is that you produce what you can sell you try to reach zero levels of inventory you try to uh, produce according to whatever the demand that is there in the market now so whenever we talk about the concept of GIT the GIT is actually to produce according to the demand GIT is to produce uh, as much as uh, we can sell GIT is to operate at zero levels of inventory so ideally speaking when we talk about the GIT GIT means that your WIP is almost zero GIT would means that your WIP is almost zero GIT would actually mean that you are almost operating at zero levels of raw materials charges is an IR GIT would mean that you would operate at WIP of zero 
GIT would mean charger mobile ka. Yet you would Nawaz ko kato that you would operate at the zero levels of raw material inventory. That's what the GIT would actually mean. Now, when we talk about the concept of throughput accounting. This concept of throughput accounting is actually connected to this theory of constraints and the GIT approach, which is that each and every organization should make sure that it only produces what it can sell. The second thing with respect to the GIT is that it's not just about you produce what you can sell. In addition to this, uh, you should make efficient use of resources make efficient use of resources and for you to be able to make the efficient use of resources what would happen is that you would try to you would try to maximize your profits you would try to produce the goods which are actually going to lead you towards the profit maximization approach so that is what you're going to do as an entity so when we discuss the throughput accounting there are different types Of terminologies that you actually need to discuss. I bet there are different type of terminologies that you need to understand when we go for the JIT, uh, when we go for this throughput accounting approach. What are the different type of terminologies? Let's have a bit of a discussion about it. That the different type of terminologies are what? The first terminology that we actually come across. Just give me a minute, please. I could just put my device on charge okay the first one of them is basically let's talk about the different type of terminologies what are those different type of terminologies that we come across so amongst the different type of terminologies that we come across the first one of them is actually the terminology of throughput itself and what exactly is this throughput itself so when I talk about the throughput the throughput actually means the throughput actually means sales minus material cost sales minus material cost so there is a terminology which is throughput. So what exactly do we mean by throughput? So the throughput is defined as sales minus material cost. Now what exactly is this throughput? Why is this sales minus material cost? Let me just explain to you people. Basically under the throughput accounting, what happens is that the throughput accounting deals the material cost to be the only variable cost. to excess the throughput accounting treats the material cost to be the only variable cost that excess so whenever we apply the throughput accounting this would actually mean that you are treating the material cost as the variable cost so resultingly the throughput is simply defined as what it's a sales minus material cost then there is this considered to be another terminology which is called the factory cost there's this another terminology which is considered to be the factory cost. Now what exactly do you mean by the factory cost? The factory cost actually means the labor cost plus overheads. So your labor cost plus the overheads that is considered to be the factory cost. I repeat your labor cost plus the overheads that is considered to be the factory cost. So now is it the direct labor or is it the indirect labor? Whatever the labor that comes are your way, whether that be the direct labor or whether that be the indirect labor that is all going to be considered as the labor cost and would be included in the factory cost plus overhead. You already know it could be the indirect material. It could be the indirect labor or it could be the indirect expenses. That is all it is going to be. So obviously when you are going to be adding up the labor cost here. 
so it probably be adding up the direct labor cost because the indirect labor cost would have already been included in the overhead cost so just to avoid the duplication you would be adding up the direct labor cost only so that is called the factory cost so amongst the two terminologies that we have discussed one of them is the throughput itself which is sales minus variable cost and the second terminology that we have discussed is called the concept of factory cost so what happens is that what happens is that if you try to create a profit and loss account for an entity according to the throughput accounting how is that profit and loss account going to be that profit and loss account is going to be like this you would have sales you would have the material cost and resultingly resultingly what are you gonna get you're gonna end up getting the throughput and from these throughput you would deduct the factory cost so when you would deduct the factory cost you will end up getting the profit you will end up getting the profit so there is this sales minus the material cost so you end up getting throughput and from the throughput you deduct the factory cost so resultingly what do you end up getting you end up getting the profit for the year now so if we talk about the organization what it should do is that it should try to maximize the throughput what you should do is that you should try to maximize your throughput because when you are gonna maximize your throughput ultimately your profits are gonna be maximized I repeat when you're gonna maximize your throughput ultimately your profits are also gonna be maximized now there's this third ratio that we need to discuss and that is called TPAR which is the throughput accounting ratio TPAR which is the throughput accounting ratio so there is a ratio which is called throughput accounting ratio that is something that you need to understand how do we calculate this throughput accounting ratio so if I talk about calculation of throughput accounting ratio the throughput accounting ratio is calculated like this it's the throughput per hour divided by factory cost per hour now what do we mean by this this means this means that whatever the time that you use as an entity for the production so whatever the throughput per hour whatever the throughput over the total time let's say if you have got if you have got a throughput of five thousand dollars and the time that you have used is let's say um, 20 hours and the factory cost is let's say four thousand dollars so resultingly what happens is that the throughput per hour is going to be five thousand dollars divided by 20. the factory cost per hour is going to be four thousand divided by 20. So hence resultingly what would happen is that when we are going to talk about it we are going to say 5000 divided by 20 gives you 250 dollar is a throughput per hour 4000 divided by 20 is going to give you 200 dollars is a factory cost per hour so if on the basis of this if you are going to calculate the throughput accounting ratio so the throughput accounting ratio is going to be 250 divided by 200 it's going to be 250 divided by 200 which is dollar 1.25 now let me just give you a bit of a guidance that this 250 divided by 200 what is it actually representing if you could see if you could see if you could see this part of the formula only which is throughput divided by factory cost 
if you could just see this part of the formula which is throughput divided by factory cost what is actually gonna happen the throughput divided by factory cost is simply treating this throughput as a capital employed and this is simply the profit so this throughput upon the factory cost is a return on capital employed simply is throughput divided by factory cost is simply a return on capital employed it's just the profitability ratio so if this ratio which is the tpar ratio the throughput accounting ratio if it is greater than or if it is equal to one that means the organization is performing well because it is generating throughput over and above the factory cost that is being incurred in order to generate that throughput so ultimately the organization is going to run into profit but if let's say if this throughput accounting ratio is less than one so ultimately the organization would run into losses i repeat ultimately the organization would run into losses so what you should do is that you should try to make sure as an organization that you have a throughput accounting ratio of more than one you should try to maximize your throughput accounting ratio as an organization that is something that you should try to do now let's move a bit forward and let's just see that what are the steps for application of throughput accounting so there are different steps for the application of throughput accounting the number one of them is to identify bottleneck resource then what happens is that calculate throughput per unit the third one of them is you got to calculate you got to calculate throughput per unit of bottleneck resource you got to calculate the throughput per unit of bottleneck resource then the next thing that you got to do is that you got to rank products and the fifth step is to allocate resources to determine optimal production plan allocate resources to determine the optimal production plan that's something that you do <coughs> now let's just try to understand something which is basically these are the steps for the application of throughput accounting what are the steps for the application of throughput accounting the first one of them is to identify bottleneck resource what is this bottleneck resource so when we talk about the concept of bottleneck bottleneck actually means something that's constraining something that's restricting the organization's performance that's called bottleneck just like you would think of a bottle just like if the water is flowing in a bottle let's say take this example i've got the bottle in front of you you could see this whole bottle it's actually wide but when you look at this neck of the bottle it's actually narrows down it actually narrows down it prevents all of the water from falling it actually rather restricts the the the, the, the loss of water or it actually rather restricts the flow of the water so that's what a bottleneck is a bottleneck is actually the resource that actually limits your production that actually restricts your production as an organization 
So what is it that you got to do? You got to identify the bottleneck resource. Now what is that bottleneck resource going to be? So when you talk about the bottleneck resource, that's a constraining resource. That's a resource that limits your production. So we could also call it a limiting resource. I repeat, we could also call it a limiting resource. That's something that you could do. I repeat, you could also call it a limiting resource. The second thing is that you got to calculate the throughput per unit. What is it that you got to do? You got to calculate the throughput per unit. The third thing is that you calculate throughput per unit of bottleneck resource. What is it that you do? You calculate throughput per unit of bottleneck resource. So like for example, if you have got a bottleneck resource as labor hours or you've got the bottleneck resource as let's say the machine hours, so on and so forth. So whatever your bottleneck resource is that you would calculate the throughput per unit of bottleneck resource. And then you would rank the products. How would you rank the products? Obviously you would be able to rank the products. A product that would have a product that would give you the maximum throughput per bottleneck resource. That product is going to be ranked higher. And lastly, you would have to reallocate the resources to determine the optimal production plan. Now, how exactly is it all going to operate? So let's just take an example. This is product A, this is product B, this is product C. So what happens is that there we have got a demand which is 5,000 units, uh, 3,000 units, 2,500 units. Then you have got throughput per unit, let's say, it's ten dollars let's say it's seven dollars let's say it's twelve dollars the number of labor hours per unit i'm just assuming that labor is a throughput a labor is a bottleneck resource so number of labor hours is four hours two hours five hours and what happens is that let's say labor availability the labor availability is thirty two thousand hours the labor availability is 32,000 hours. Now, let's just try to understand this thing. How exactly are we going to do all of this? Uh, we already have throughput per unit. We have the number of labor hours per unit. So what we are going to do is that we are going to calculate the throughput per labor hour and then you're going to calculate the throughput per labor hour so it's 2.5 it's 3.5 and it's 2.4 i repeat your throughput per labor hour is going to be 2.5 3.5 2.4 then what would happen is that you would say that we got to rank the products. How would you rank the product? Obviously, this is going to be ranked first. This is going to be ranked second. And this is going to be ranked third. So you would have this one being ranked at first. This is second and then this one as third. Why? Because obviously the product with the greatest throughput uh, per unit of bottleneck resource or per unit of limiting resource is going to be a preferred product is going to be the product that is going to be preferred so what are we going to do the last step is to allocate the resources i mean the last step is going to be allocate the resources how exactly are you going to allocate the resources let's just try to understand 
that how exactly are we gonna allocate the resources? So the resources are gonna allocate it like this. We're gonna say, available labor hours, which is 32,000 hours. You would allocate the labor hours to product B. And when you would allocate the labor hours to product B, it's 3,000 units, two hours. So resultingly, what would happen is that 3,000 units, two hours, gives you 6,000. Then, you have got product A. The total demand of product A is 5,000 units. That means you would produce 5,000 units. Multiply by 4 gives you 20,000 hours as an allocation. 20,000 hours as an allocation for product A. And lastly, what would happen is that we would allocate to product C. Now, the problem with product C is that the total demand for product C is 2,500 units. What is it? It's 2,500 units. And the number of units, uh, number of hours per unit is five. So that means 12,500 hours are required for product C. But if I allocate these 12,500 hours, so resultingly what happens is, I would be standing at what? I would be standing at negative 6,500 hours. And that is, not possible that is not possible I've got maximum 32,000 hours and that needs to be allocated I've got maximum 32,000 hours and that be allocated so if I've got maximum 32,000 hours and that needs to be allocated so how is it all going to operate I'm going to say let's work backwards we have got 6500 hours available and this is actually going to be 6,500 divided by 5. Gives you 300 units. So if you want to calculate the optimal production plan, the optimal production plan for this company is going to be B, A, and C. There are going to be 3,000 units of B. They're going to be 5,000 units of A and they're going to be 1,300 units of C. That's what the optimal production plan is going to be. 3,000, 5,000 and 1,000. So 1,300. So basically if you produce in these, 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 these quantities, these, 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 these products, so ultimately you would be maximizing your profit. So I bet ultimately what are you going to be doing? You'll be maximizing your profits. Is this okay? So what have we done? We have actually discussed the concept of throughput accounting. And what is this throughput accounting all about? It's about maximizing the throughput. What do we mean by throughput? Throughput is basically sales minus the material cost. Sales minus the direct material cost. That's what is considered to be the throughput. We got to maximize the throughput. We got to earn the maximum return. That's what we should try to do as an entity whenever we apply the throughput account so what am I gonna do I am going to move on to some of the practice questions also on the throughput but this is what in general the concept of throughput is all about okay so let's have a bit of a discussion about the different uh, scenarios with respect to this uh, throughput accounting and see that how exactly are we gonna get the answers to these different scenarios of the throughput accounting so amongst the different questions that are examinable in here, uh, the first one of them is, it says, um, what does it say? It says that um, which one of the following would increase the throughput accounting ratio? So you see the formula for the throughput accounting ratio is what? The formula for the throughput accounting ratio is the uh, throughput per hour it's not necessary throughput per hour. It could be just throughput also. Divided by factory cost per hour. So if you want to increase the throughput, either the numerator has to increase or the denominator has to decrease. 
it says an increase in the speed of the fastest machine in the production process so when you increase increase the speed the increase the speed that means the time taken actually reduces and when the time taken reduces the throughput actually reduces uh, the throughput actually increases so let's say if you had a thousand throughput divided by 400 hours then you have a thousand throughput divided by 300 hours so automatically throughput per hour is going to increase but at the same time what is going to happen is that let's say if we had uh, 500 as a cost 500 divided by 400 now 500 divided by 300 so what would happen is that the denominator would also increase so you would have an increase in the numerator plus an increase in the denominator so automatically the throughput accounting ratio may not always increase it will it will probably get adjusted it says an unexpected increase in the factory rent increase in the factory rent would reduce the throughput ratio because the denominator would increase a 5% wage increase linked to an 8% improvement in productivity a 5% wage increase so there is a labor cost which is increased by 5% it is leading to 8% enhancement in efficiency that means numerator is is actually 8% it's 5% so automatically the numerator is going to increase it's going to create a, it's going to create a positive signs for the entity so this is what it is going to be I repeat this is what it is probably going to be now what next is there the next situation with respect to this specific scenario is that it says a manufacturing company decides which of the three mutually exclusive products when we say mutually exclusive that means that they cannot be produced uh, simultaneously together to make an its factory on the basis of maximizing the throughput accounting ratio <clears throat> current data for the three products is shown in the following table x y and z selling price is given direct material is given machine hours per unit is given total factory costs excluding the direct materials are 150,000 so the total factory costs excluding the direct materials are 150,000. The company cannot make enough of any of the products to satisfy external demand entirely as machine hours are restricted. So it says which of the following actions would improve the company's existing throughput accounting ratio. Now, <clears throat> let's just try to see. So what is going to happen is we have got X, we have got Y and we have got Z. If I could just try to calculate the throughput for each one of them it's actually uh, 20 30 4 throughput per hour is gonna be what 20 divided by 10 gives you 2 30 divided by 20 gives you 1.5 and 4 divided by 2.5 gives you 1.6 so what do we have we have the throughput per hour we have got the throughput per hour of x to be 2 throughput per hour of y to be 1.5 throughput per hour of z to be 1.6 now it says which of the following actions would improve the company's existing throughput accounting ratio so how would you increase the throughput accounting ratio it says increase the selling price of product z by 10% increase the selling price of product Z by 10% okay increase the selling price of product Y by 10% then it says reduce the material cost of product Z by 5% and reduce the material cost of product Y by 5% now try to understand what is actually gonna happen with respect to all of this if I increase the selling price of Z by 10% so it's actually gonna become 22 16 is there so 22 minus 16 I'll get 6 divide by 2.5 gives you 2.4 as the throughput per hour if I increase the selling price of Y, it would become 44 
this is 10 divided by 20 so you've got 34 divided by 20 gives you 1.7 so what is actually happening is that amongst these two a and b a is better b is not good now do we need to go for c and d also let's just try to see it says reduce the material cost of z by 5% reduce the material cost of y by 5% so if I talk about the Z, uh, 20 minus, if you have to reduce the material cost, it has to be 16 into 0.95, gives you 15.2, gives you 4.8, divide by 2.5, 1.92. Here we have got 2.4. So again, this is not suggested. Now reduce the material cost of product Y again it would not have much of an impact because it's already producing less throughput per hour. So hence the correct answer has to be A. The correct answer has to be A. So what did I do? I just incorporated the different values into this scenario. The examiner has got this next question it says Sky Limited has a two process environment and details of the processes are as follows process P each machine produces six units an hour and sky has eight machines working at 90 percent capacity so it produces six units per hour then each machine produces process Q each machine produces nine units per hour and sky has six machines working at 85 percent capacity then what actually happens is that it says one of the sky products is cloud cloud is not particularly popular but does sell at a selling price of 20 although discounts of 15 percent may apply material costs of five and direct labor costs are double the material cost cloud spends 0.2 hours in process p but 0.3 hours in process q what is cloud's throughput per hour in its bottleneck process so what happens is that we need to establish what is the cloud throughput per hour in its bottleneck resource. Now the first thing that you need to do is that you need to be able to identify the bottleneck resource. So is it the process P or is it the process Q? Which one of them is the bottleneck resource? Which one of them is the bottleneck resource? That is something that we have to do. So if I try to calculate, if I try to calculate for the product process P, if I try to calculate for the process P, uh, not much information is given, but I know that six units are being produced in an hour. Eight machines are there operating at 90% capacity. gives you 43.2 is the number of units that could produce that could be produced in a day if I talk about Q nine units six machines so nine into six into point eight five gives you 45.9 now since this process P is slower this is a slower process so we would say that this is the bottleneck process this is the process that is causing the bottleneck now what are we going to do next it says what is the cloud throughput per hour in its bottleneck process so what would happen is that the selling price is 20 into 85 percent gives you 17 the direct material is five dollar so you have got the throughput to be twelve dollar what do you have you've got a throughput to be twelve dollars now it says each unit of cloud spends 0.2 hours in process p what does it spend it is spends 0.2 hour in process p so throughput per bottleneck resource is going to be 12 divided by 0 0.2 so this actually gives you 60 what does it give you it gives you 60 I mean what does it give you 
it gives you 60. So basically what happens is that the cloud throughput per hour is going to be 60. Next it says a manufacturing company uses three processes to make two products X and Y. The time available on the three processes is reduced because of the need for preventative maintenance and rest breaks. Table below details the process time per product and daily time available. So what do we have? We have got the daily time available. We have got the different type of processes details available. Process 1, 2, 3 hours available per day. Hours required to make one unit of product X is this. Hours required to make one unit of product Y. Now daily demand for product X is 10 and pro product Y is 16 units respectively. Which of the following will improve throughput? It's saying which of the following will improve the throughput. Now, what is it that we need to do? We need to actually identify the bottleneck resource. What do we need to do? We need to identify the bottleneck resource. So whichever the bottleneck resource is, you got to work on that bottleneck resource. Now, is uh, we got to see that which one of them is the bottleneck resource that's there. For process one, there are 22 hours available for day. Let's just try to see if the process one is bottleneck resource. 10 units of X plus 16 units of Y gives you 22 and 22 hours are available. That means no bottleneck. Let's talk about process two. You have got 10 units of X 0.75 plus 16 units of Y. So it's basically 10 into 0.75 plus 16. 23.5 hours required. So this is not there. When we talk about process 3, it's 10 into 1 plus 16 into 0.5. Gives you 18 and 18 hours. So it's basically the process 2 that's a bottleneck time and you got to work on process 2. It says increasing the efficiency and maintenance of process 2. You don't have to do anything else. Just focus on the bottleneck resource. Next is the following statements have been made about throughput accounting. Which one of the above statement is not true? Not true of throughput accounting. So what does it say? It says throughput accounting considers that the only variable costs in the short run are materials and components. This is true. Throughput accounting considers that the time at the bottleneck resource has a value, not elsewhere. Yes, this is also true. Throughput accounting views the stock building as a non-value adding activity and therefore discourages it. Yes, it's close to GIT. Throughput accounting was designed as a decision making tool for situations where there is a bottleneck in the production process. No, it's not for this purpose. It's actually there to improve the throughput, to enhance the throughput. That's what the purpose of this throughput accounting was. What is the definition of the throughput accounting ratio? It says throughput contribution divided by hours. No, throughput per hour, conversion cost, per total conversion cost. Okay, now see. So, uh, what does it say? It says that you got to say that what is the throughput accounting ratio. So when we say throughput accounting ratio, it's throughput contribution divided by hours. No. Conversion cost per hour divided by no. Throughput per hour divided by conversion cost per hour. Total conversion cost. No, this is also not there. So with respect to this, we generally read it to be like this factory cost per hour and the factory cost include what labor plus overhead and that could also be considered as a conversion cost so yes c is the correct answer c is the correct answer it says the following information is available from a single product units produced is this time taken is this maximum time available is this Material purchase is this, material use is this. Labor cost, overhead, sales, etc. etc. The throughput accounting ratio for this product is what? 
first of all throughput 9800 kg of material is used and you purchase it at the rate of 3 so this gives you 2400 gives you 6600 gives you 6600 so what does it give you 6600 but the problem over here right now is that when we calculate the throughput we don't say the material used we go about material which is purchased we incorporate the entire material cost so it's actually gonna be like this you would say 3000 so you've got 6000 as the throughput then what do we need to do? We need to have the 3 wood per hour 200. 30. What do we need? We need conversion cost per hour. Thirty five hundred divided by 217.5. So it's actually 13 divided by 17.5. gives you 1.71 something like that so 1.7 is what the answer is going to be. thirty five is more or less same so I'm not going through it so we are done with these different type of questions pertaining to the throughput accounting ratio and I hope that you people do understand that how exactly do we go about doing these different type of questions on the throughput accounting.